Hello, this is David Benheim. In this video, I'm going to show you co-authoring in Excel. So how to work remotely in Excel with other colleagues at the same time. Features include sharing files, saving on the cloud, both OneDrive and SharePoint, simultaneous editing. So not a lot of people know this, but multiple people can edit the same Excel file at the same time using Excel desktop, much like Google Sheets. You can also do app mentions now, and then people get notified that you've mentioned them in an Excel file and seeing different filter views so that if two people are working on the same file, you know that they can use their own filter views that don't impact the other one. And then using Microsoft Forms because that's a way to collect information from your colleague. Before I show you this stuff, a really cool quick PowerPoint trick. So I created this using PowerPoint AI design ideas. In fact, I just typed it out like this in bullet point. And then in the home tab, I can click on design ideas and it presets some things with these icons. Look at that. I haven't even had to do anything. It looks up these icons. If you don't like one specific one, you click on that and then this pops up and you can change the icon for something else. So yeah, if you like this feature, then this design ideas has a ton more stuff and I'll link to another video about it that I talk about there. But for now, let's get started in Excel. I'll also mention when you are saving on the cloud, how it differs between saving in OneDrive versus SharePoint or within Teams. My name is David Benheim and I love making videos about tech, any business tech that people use in the office, whether it's Teams or PowerPoint or Outlook or Zoom or Google Sheets or Excel. I've got tons of videos on my channel. Please consider subscribing if you want more content like this. So let's look at how to save files online. So here I am in a file that's saved on my computer, on my local machine. If I want to save this online, then I have this auto save, I can toggle it on, and then I can choose to save it to OneDrive personal or OneDrive work account. I click on there and it saves it onto OneDrive. Note that this isn't SharePoint. To save onto SharePoint, you can't get it access this way. I will show you how in a sec. Then you can sort of click here. And if you want to, you can change where it is. So you can rename it here to whatever you want, which is really good actually. And you can move it between other places in OneDrive. Note again, this is OneDrive and not SharePoint. You can also access the version history there. And let me just show you what that looks like in another file. So over here, if I go to here and version history, I get this that pops up. And for each one, I can sort of open a previous version. And then I can here choose to restore this previous version or choose to save as and save somewhere else if I want it for records. So you can also save onto SharePoint using the normal sort of file and save as option and then you can choose to save it in SharePoint. These are some SharePoint sites that you might have. I have another video where I go into very much detail about OneDrive versus SharePoint for file sharing, but this is a way to save it. Another way to save it is directly within Teams. So this is something that I like to use actually. So here I am with uh, File Explorer on my left and Teams on my right. So what I can do is I can just sort of drag a file into the chat window there and then it uploads it there and then I can start a new conversation and that will automatically save it within the channel and everyone who has access to the channel is able to see it. Now what I can do is I can click on there and it opens it up as an editable mode without leaving Microsoft Teams. So you can edit stuff in Teams using the same commands that you get in Excel online. Or if you want to, you can choose to open in desktop app and it will open it in Excel on desktop. 
If you go to chat, if you share things within the chat window, then that goes to OneDrive rather than SharePoint. Again, I have a video that explains OneDrive versus SharePoint versus Teams for file storage. So uh, within Teams, you have this conversation aspect as well. So this sort of links to the conversation in general in your team. So again, another good way for co-authoring. Uh, and, and like normal teams, you can sort of react to messages, you can add mention people, you can add GIFs or anything else within this conversation. Personally, I don't like editing things in Excel online or on Teams. I prefer to do it in the desktop, but that is a way that you can have that working. Here I am in Excel desktop and I have here another cell and that is being edited by David Benign, which is actually just another version of myself and they can edit things live there. So I'm going to put this side by side I'm going to click on this button and quick trick. If you want to put this on the side, you can just drag it across like that and then it will put it on that side half and half. So as you can see, I am in Excel online in the same place. And if I edit this cell 70, 733 that has edited it there or if I edit it here that has edited it as well here at the same time I can pretty much do anything I can if I want to color cells and then that will eventually just change it over there so a lot of people don't know that you can do this um, I am doing this with Excel on the web but I want to assure you that if a colleague of mine had Excel desktop open they can edit it on Excel desktop whilst I'm on Excel desktop as well, as long as it's saved in the right place. Over here, you would be able to see who else is in the document. At the moment, it's just me because I'm in it in both places, but you would be able to see who's in it there as well. So um, now let's look at comments. So people have forever known about comments in Excel is this kind of red triangle up here. And you can create or edit those as you want, but these were never really comments to me because it's just more information about that cell. We're used to using social media where comments mean so much more. For example, we want to be able to reply to comments. We want to be able to at mention people. If you've ever used Google Sheets, you'll probably know how important comments is to Google Sheets. You can change entire email chains into comment threads and it makes collaboration just so much better. So the newer Excel version has in fact done just that. They've completely superseded what they used to call comments to the extent that this is now called a note. In the review tab, if I want to insert a note, I can do that and it puts this red triangle. So here I can go to new comment and then I can say, what do you think? And lock that in from here. I can edit it if I want to, or someone can reply. And if I want to see all my comments, I can click on comments pane here and see all the list of that, including the cell references. It was really hard to do that when you had these red notes because you could have a note sort of down here and you wouldn't notice it or even realize it. You can also click a new comment, add a new comment from here. When you're done, you can also resolve it. You can click these three dots and click resolve or delete the thread and it just shows up like that. In the comments tab, it would show sort of grayed out there. Same here, you can delete or resolve a thread as well. And uh, the other things that you can do with it is you can at mention people. So I'm going to at mention myself. And what that does is it sends that person an email notification about it. Uh, if they don't have permission, it'll ask you to share it. Jared, for example, it tells me that I have to share it with him in order to give them access. And so let's see what the email notification looks like. So here I am in Outlook and this is what the email notification looks like. So it says, I mentioned myself, how is this for you? You might want to mention yourself just to give yourself a task or a note that goes into your email. 
But if someone else mentioned you, then you would get the same thing. You can go to the comments directly here. And then it opens up that in Excel online there. But from Excel online, you can very easily just sort of open in desktop app by clicking this as well. Another aspect that's good for co-authoring is being able to set certain filters that only you see. So for example, here I can go to this table and I can go to data and filter it and say I want this sorted smallest to largest there and only filtered for a few views. But then I don't want this to interrupt the workflow of my colleagues at the same time. So in the view tab, you can choose to set this as a specific view. So I can say this is a new view and I can keep this current view and maybe rename it. So some movies sorted by minutes. And then I can, if I want to exit the view or create a new view as well, or edit some options there. Note that the view tab over here only has this in the Office Insider version. If you are using an older version of Excel, then you cannot see this yet, but you can see this in Excel on the web. So there are some things that are only in Excel on the web. Uh, for example, what I'm about to show you in my last example. Uh, notice that a lot of these features only apply to Excel with Office 365. If you wanna know which version you have, you can click File and then Account. And then here you can see what you have. I have an Office Insider Edition, which means that I have the versions before they get released. Uh, finally, I have Microsoft 365 for Enterprise. If you have other versions, you might see, for example, Excel 2013, Excel 2016, etc., etc., over here. Final view that I want to show you, and this is only in Excel Online. In the Insert tab, you have the ability to start a form. Now that opens up Microsoft Forms, very, very similar to Google Forms if you've ever used that. You can also get to Forms by navigating it through this waffle over here on the top left. And you can just sort of uh, create name and add some questions like uh, email, add some, any of these types like ranking one. This is actually not in Google Sheets. It allows people to drag uh, what is most important to them in the way that they want and then just add some generic questions, make it multiple answers. You can even add branching here. I have a couple more videos on forms that are useful if you're interested in this. If you preview it, then this is how it looks. So people can drag this as it is and they can see it in mobile view as well. If you wanna share it, you can click that and choose whether anyone can respond or only people with links inside your organization. And here is how you can collaborate and share a link for anyone who has an Office 365 account or only people in your organization. So that is Microsoft Forms and that is available in Excel on the web. What that does is eventually when people reply, you get responses that look like this. So Forms auto analyzes it for you and puts in nice pretty charts. <laughs> but if you wanna go further, it can be linked to Excel if you started it within Excel using the method that I showed you. So if you start a new form from here, then this is started within Forms itself and open in Excel. This does not have the cloud icon as opposed to this one, which means that it will download a new Excel copy every time. Here's an example. So I have to click open in Excel and every time someone else replies, then we get a new one to download. So it just downloads it periodically and that is different to what you get if you start a form from here. I uh, highly recommend you start it from Excel on the web for that reason. So if you wanna see how the results look in Excel, here they are 
it just shows the answers to that with people dragging things on top and you can do further analysis using forms in Excel. So if you like this video, I have plenty more videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Microsoft Forms. Uh, consider hitting the subscribe button if you wanna see more content like this. Thanks for watching.